Hell yeah. Yeah, yeah. So it's 7.1. <laughs> yeah. Oh, no way. Yeah, 7.1. I should make it 7.2. Just get another subby and put it on the other side. <laughs> Neighbours love me. They, <laughs> they adore uh, my film selections. I can love assure it. you. <laughs> Are we definitely rolling? All right, right, and welcome to the Pagey Train for 2020. I'm here with Matthias Bowler, winner of uh, Made in the West Film Festival 2019 and Audience Choice Award winner. Uh, uh, Welcome, Matthias. Thank you. Thanks for having me. Man, I think you totally blew people away at the festival. Yeah, apparently. (laughs) Yeah, man. Um, uh, There's only ever been, because the festival's been running, it's, it's in its ninth year now. And there's only ever been one winner that got the Audience Choice Award as well. Uh, Big shout out to uh, Bridget LeMay, actually. She's from WA. Yeah, right. And that was in 2014. So real out west. (laughs) Yeah, yeah, she was West West. That was a very cool film. Uh, She came over um, from Perth to shoot a film in Blacktown. Yeah. Uh, She hired everyone from Blacktown. So that's how it qualified for Made in the West because... There's two components to Made in the West. Um, it's, it's to encourage people from Western Sydney to make films, but it's also to encourage people from outside of Western Sydney to come to Western Sydney to make films. Yep. Um, and, yeah, it was really good to see an outsider uh, come in and take the, take the glassware um, because that's, that's one of the mechanisms of what we're up to, I guess. Yeah, because it's still a Western Sydney story. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, like, she came here, hired Western Sydney people to do her film. Yep. Of course, we well, come on back and make a film. Uh, just, <laughs> um, but, uh, yeah, uh, so Campesinos. Um, so you went over to uh, Chile. Yes. Yeah, so tell us. Yeah, yeah. Um, well, so... Did you decide to make the film before you went to Chile or did you get to Chile and you're like, I've got this camera gear, I think I've got a story? Um, it started ages ago when I, because I, I'm Chilean and I go to Chile pretty often. Mm-hmm. Um, and it started on a, on a holiday to Chile where I realised I go all the time to see family, but I don't really go out and see the country. Mm-hmm. And one day, yeah, w- on one of my trips, uh, I went with my sister and my mom and we went all the way down south and we made it to Patagonia and it was the first time I'd ever been there and on that trip is where I bumped into the gauchos on the street because they they have their they're just on their on horseback Um, and I just thought they were so cool (laughs) and uh, as most people most tourists do like you take photos of them you stop them on the street you ask them questions and um, well I guess that's where you had the idea right that would have looked like it's out of a film yeah yeah that's right you've time traveled that's right and in Patagonia, you can't get a bad shot. Like, yeah. there's mountain ranges in the background, someone on a horse. Like, it just looks incredible. So, you know, I, I took a few photos and mm-hmm. um, asked them a few questions, but didn't really um, get into depth with anything. Mm-hmm. And a few a few years passed, and, you know, that photo I took of one of the gauchos was still my favourite photo I'd ever taken. Did you mount, the, mount it on the wall or anything like I that? I should have, no. <laughs> you should just, totally do that. <laughs> it was just on my Instagram and you know every now and then I'd go back and look at it and I was like oh that's such a good photo yeah. and I had the idea pretty quickly after that about going back and wanting to interview them but I it was such a far away idea yeah. so almost impossible that I was just like nah 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 it's a big reach that's right yeah, yeah and it's it was big reach. it was like it's just <laughs> the other side of the world really and yeah, um, yeah and I had one friend uh i have one friend down there in patagonia and Mm -hmm. i sent him a message and i said hey i've got this idea like it's crazy but what do you think i Mm want to go and interview the gauchos like do you think they'd be up for it and he's like i'm actually with one right now let me ask him yeah okay (laughs) and i was like what he's like yeah yeah and there we go and that's how it sort of started and they were they were keen and Mm -hmm. that was all i really needed to be like all right, I'm going to do it. And I actually didn't have camera gear back then or anything. Mm-hmm. And so I saved for a little while, bought myself some gear. Yeah. And um, went over with Miller, who was my uh, cinematographer. And we just, yeah, we went, we didn't really know what to do, what we were going to do. Uh, we didn't really know if they'd be keen to do it. We, mm-hmm. I had that conversation with, mm-hmm. but it wasn't really with them. And yeah, so... Yeah, so it was through a third party where you've organised it. That's right, yeah. yeah it wasn't okay. really organised. It was just like, it was just like, But what hey, films are, really? Yeah. What films are organised? <laughs> yeah. You know, we try to organise them. I don't know if exactly. Maybe it's yeah. organised chaos, yeah. perhaps. Yeah, no, I said to Miller, like, look, worst comes to worst, 
we have a great holiday in Patagonia. Like, <laughs> yeah, with some nice photos. With That's nice right. Yeah, that yeah. Out of it. Our Instagram will look good, you know. <laughs> yeah, yeah, we'll be able to blow that right up. Yeah. I, look, I just think it's amazing that you you were inspired from a, a photograph that you took. Like, it's a, it started at a single frame where you've gone, yeah, this is something I want to... This is a story I want to tell. Yeah, it was... Yeah, I don't know. I really like that photo. Um, I'll have to show you it. <laughs> yeah, you've got to show, you're going to have to show me. Uh, yeah, you yeah. Definitely, um, you should mount it on your wall. I will. I, I will, think that's yeah. the, right next to your glassware. Yeah, well, now with the docker, we've got so many great stills that it's like that photo isn't even as good <laughs> anymore. <so. laughs> no, but I think um, for you, though, you know, I, th- I think sometimes that nostalgia is important where you yeah. reflect and yeah. you go, wow, that's where that moment began. Yeah. yeah. Um, I, I find that out of certain objects and things that I collect. Um, they have this certain energy about them and yep. uh, they're a spark that's to, right. to something cool or or they're a trigger down memory lane. You see it and you go, oh, yeah, that's right. Yeah. It's that Mary Kondo thing. Does it yeah. spark joy? <laughs> <You know? laughs> but, yeah, it's, it's, you know, I often, like, ask or get asked, like, how do you come up with ideas? And there's just no one way to do it, really, I think. It's, like, mm. it can be a photograph. It can be... It can be anything. Anything. Um, yeah, I, 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 th- I think it's, um, I don't know, there's different scenarios where I get ideas. And some of them are totally uh, crazy and out there. You go, I'd never do that, but it's fun to think about yeah um yeah I, I, I yeah there's all kinds of things that do that like even a situation on public transport you know that could trigger a story uh, or, or what you think you know yeah it can come from anywhere it can yeah. come from anywhere and sometimes like when you're trying to force an idea it just never comes either no, it's like a wave though you got to surf <laughs> yeah. the wave yeah i yeah. think if you try and force it you're crashing on that wave that's right you're, yeah. not, you're not actually riding it um so you went over to uh, uh chile and then um how long were you there for we were there for two weeks shooting oh wow yeah, two weeks yeah but in the doco it looks like we were there for ages because yeah that was, that's what i was finding two weeks really surprising i thought at least a month to get that coverage yeah no well we got a lot of coverage but it's more the the weather like the seasons Mm -hmm. it's just crazy um you know one day it's snowing the next day it's summer the next Mm -hmm. day it's crazy winds sometimes it's the same day (laughs) um (laughs) which was the probably the craziest part so when you look at the doco it -hmm. looks like we were there for a really long time because of that like but um yeah yeah the changes in weather yeah i I, I actually when i watched first watched it i thought perhaps that you've done a few visits that was my first impression. Yeah, right. Yeah, I thought, oh, yeah, he's made this over a year. He's gone back and, yeah, so you did it in two I mean, weeks straight up. That's that would cool. be the dream. <laughs> the dream would be to go back quite often and revisit those people. And Yeah. Um, well, I remember uh, talking, because uh, I you know, recently did Made in the West TV with you, um, a talk show. Uh, big plug uh, for Still Searching. Check it out, Made in the West TV. It's coming out soon. Um, the promo will be out in a couple of weeks. Um, but I remember you were talking to uh, Sunil on that show about perhaps going back uh, to show these guys uh, this film because they, they, these guys are off the grid, right? There's no internet, nothing like that. Yeah, that's right. Um, I still don't know how I'm going to do it. <laughs> uh, I'd really like to be there when... when when they see it as well. I think that's a good yeah. Patreon. That would be a good Patreon. It would be, wouldn't it? I yeah, think you should yeah. do a Patreon to get that <laughs> yeah, done. Yeah, um, You know, uh, present your film somewhere. And, uh, well, well, speaking of which, surely you're showing this film, right? Because uh, uh, you, you got to... Did it, did it um, premiere at Made in the West? Uh, it was hasn't it, was it? Premi- No, it didn't. It no. didn't premiere when, at Where did it first West. play? Uh, first, it first played at St Kilda Film Festival. That okay. Was its, that was its world premiere. And, wow. Um, that's, that a, was, that's a big festival. Cool. Yeah, yeah. It was awesome it was awesome um and it was really good for me because i was actually living in melbourne uh, at the time like i was on a job there so yeah. like it was perfect yeah and great yeah that, that was that was really cool experience. so you got to i've had a few people on the show that have uh, walked the red carpet and i had st kilda now, those guys are doing a good job big shout out to the st kilda film festival <laughs> so yeah. what was your experience like there yeah it was cool uh some great films and it's great to just see so many aussie films as well Mm. um and to be honest like the craziest part was there was heaps of western sydney films uh this year yeah so i bumped into people left right and center that are just you know making films out here it's a bit freaky isn't it yeah a couple from made in the west this year were there as well so um it was awesome yeah i think um this comes up time and time again there are so many um filmmakers in western sydney it's it's insane they're everywhere and they're all doing quality work yeah yeah there's so many stories to tell so many different backgrounds so many different minds yeah Yeah. to be honest i was quite 
blind to it for a while and mm. then you know you meet one person you meet the next and suddenly you you're in like it explodes yeah yeah and you're like whoa there's a whole like industry out here as well so it's it's really cool and and it's, it's growing it's growing as well um i noticed that um a lot of us out there are getting a lot more freelance work there's a lot more going on yeah, yeah. um before like you know five years ago you'd be fighting tooth and nail for freelance work don't get me wrong it's still tooth and nail <laughs> but it just seems to be a, a little less you know um spa, you know it's it's more uh populated not so sparse yep. yeah yeah um yeah so yeah uh so you went down to st kilda and then the second time was it made in the west well you've done it's uh, done the really rounds hasn't it how many rounds where else, where, else is, where else is your own play <laughs> um probably like one of the coolest experiences was in spain so i went to mallorca oh yeah um that was that was cool because i was actually on holiday in, in south africa at the, at the time mm-hmm. when i got the note uh so i was like sort of halfway there and i was like oh you know what do i do and i ended up just tell me you went i went i went yeah yeah so you know if i was in sydney i probably wouldn't have gone Mm. i probably would have been like oh you know it's a bit far away yeah yeah, but because i was halfway there i was like oh yeah i'm gonna do it and that was that was a really cool experience just because it was spanish speaking and the film is in spanish yeah uh just a completely different audience to what it's had here and it ended up winning uh best documentary in Mallorca as oh, well. Oh, man, congratulations. Was, yeah. What another feather to have yeah, in your cap. Well, that, that would have been sensational. Man, it was so unexpected. Like, yeah. really, really unexpected. I had, I had <laughs> sat, like, uh, during the award ceremony right at the back, like, mm. at the top. In yeah. the car. I was like, yeah. And so I genuinely did not expect it even remotely. Yeah, so. you're totally blind to win yeah, that yeah, award. Yeah, yeah. So, so I had to run down way, the stairs. Best way like, to win one. Yeah, there's a great photo someone took of me, like, running, like, <laughs> so excited. Doing a half marathon to go collect your award. Yeah, yeah. So that was, that was really awesome to know that the film mm. uh, had an impact on the other side of the world as well. Yeah, so. wow, man. And yeah. then you get to celebrate all over again at Made in the West. And Made in the West. That was even cooler. That's probably the coolest one just because it's it's home and mm. it's personal and it's around the people uh it's around your colleagues exactly right peers, yeah, yeah yeah and a lot of a lot of people hadn't seen it a mm. lot of uh, my friends a lot of just yeah the people that i wanted to, to show the film to hadn't seen it mm. um so made in the west was like perfect opportunity to get everyone out and oh man totally groundbreaking for made in the west and i think for a lot of film festivals um to have a film uh in subtitles win like because it's just unheard of like subtitle films don't usually win the big awards yeah you yeah. know well we've got the big parasite win uh this week which oh yeah is pretty crazy the oscar win yeah uh, which is a huge step and i guess shows that like subtitles is not a big barrier it's, anymore it's not that barrier anymore that's right um yeah. i wonder what the, uh, the effect on that is is it because we've become a texting society and we read more in posts and we you know read more on because uh, you know there's a lot of subtitles online all the time yeah um even True. you know so maybe maybe there is a shift in that paradigm of people you know not minding you know reading while watching yeah i I hadn't thought of it that way but i think you're right because the amount of times i'm flicking through facebook and i won't press the sound on a video i'll read it or something just out of habit yeah Um, well it might be the scenario you're in you might be on a train you're like i don't have my headphones but i want to watch that exactly yeah um and and, and look and if you're out there people and you don't have your headphones don't just start watching a goddamn movie on the train (laughs) all right that is just so freaking irritating um you should you 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 shouldn't be watching a movie on your phone anyway <laughs> oh well that's true that's true um i actually don't watch a lot of movies on yeah, yeah on yeah, that yeah. on my phone yeah i'm a bit of a news junkie i watch a lot of news yeah yeah exactly just the content, well i don't do it in the morning content, yeah. i don't i don't watch news in the morning anymore because it, it it gets me wow uh so uh, when you shot camp uh camp casinos, um what did you what did you shoot it on uh so we shot on a sony a7s2 mm-hmm. um with Canon FD lenses. Okay. Yep. So we just shot on a 24 mil and a 35 mil. Do they um, bust straight on there, or did you have to have the <laughs> old meta bones? No, it's not even a meta bones. It's just an adapter, um, and it's just so finicky. It's yeah. probably like of all the lenses, like one of the most finicky ones because if you don't put it in the right way, the aperture doesn't turn on. <laughs> like, oh, okay. It's got like a needle that turns on the aperture in the lens. Yeah. Uh, so the <laughs> wow so yeah. you you put yourself in a bit of a uh, yeah. difficult spot um, yeah, with yeah. that selection but they're 
cheap lenses, yeah. um, really cheap, um, and they have a great look to them, which... It certainly did look gorgeous. It was yeah. very well shot. Yeah. Um, that was yeah. all Miller. Shout yeah. Out to Miller. Big shout out to Miller. Well done <laughs> on uh, your film, bro. And uh, also won Best Cinematographer at Made in the West. Yeah, well, na- well naturally. It was uh, beautifully <laughs> shot. Um, but, um, yeah, sometimes you get uh, restricted by... I think, uh, th- I think sometimes it's good to be restricted by a budget. I know, like... Oh. We dream of like, oh, if I just had this and if I just had that, but sometimes it, it forces you to work a little bit harder. Yeah, that's right. And I think, to be honest with this project, and we spoke about it uh, a fair bit, mm-hmm. it was perfect because you're going into someone's environment, you're going into someone's home uh, that doesn't, you know, they're not used to cameras, mm. they're not used to anything like that. And um, if we had come in with like an Ari oh. <laughs> and, you know, <laughs> someone with a boom, boom, and, um, you know, just like it would have been a completely different experience for them. Mm. They probably would have been turned off by the whole idea of it. But, you know, you go in with a tiny little SLR and it's it's just a completely different experience. Well, I think, they, I think we get that from being used to being photographed and photographs are less intrusive. So the, the DSLR certainly has the... The, it has a I don't know it's a bit of a spy action slash clandestine way of shooting a film yeah um, people are a bit easier around them when you put big television uh, cameras or big film cameras I think people get nervous yeah yeah that's right and I, I, like also it was just me and Miller like yeah. two people um, so it, it worked out really well because you know as, as soon as it's a big crew like everything's just more it's <laughs> legitimate more work. and it's just like what oh, what I get myself into and you just feel that sort of like uh, yeah but um yeah they were they were really open to talking to me which was um hopefully partly because of that as well and mm. because we went about it the right way so well i think you should definitely get that patreon together you know just be, yeah. you know maybe you should do a short clip of this get that patreon going yeah, to, get, yeah. to, to get this film shown in uh chile yeah that's right um yeah. uh but uh um but you are releasing this film soon you were telling me before yeah so very when, soon. when's the film coming very out soon uh it's coming out the 27th of february 27th of february guys uh check it out we where, where is it showing are you showing it uh publicly or just doing a, a uh so on the 26th of february uh mm. i'll be doing a screening yeah. at golden age cinema oh man I love the golden age. yeah it's yeah. really classy yeah, yeah yeah it's awesome awesome little space and they were really kind and uh allowed me to show the film so mm-hmm. that's really cool um well, that's, was, the, that's their that's their mo they, they're they really helpful that's right yeah i mean we'll bring people we use they'll use the bar and <laughs> well i think it's an 80 seater yeah so yeah. it's an 80 seater that's very uh intimate and um it's got like this underground bar it's like really cool like um i i did a screening there with uh bina big shout out to bina um and i'll totally do a screening there again it was absolutely fantastic yeah um, it's, it's re- dcp as well yeah and it's really well run so you yeah. you know it's in safe hands as well but, yeah um, yeah so i'm excited for that that'll be cool mm-hmm. and also just an excuse to um uh. Well, have you sold, are you, you're not selling tickets or is it a free event? It's a free event. It's a free event. It's a free so event, guys. Go check it check out. It out uh, it's actually sold out. Oh, you sold it out crazy. already. But there's a wait list, so if anyone drops out, join Yeah, join and the if you list. do drop out, guys, don't forget to contact the people you got the tickets mm. off. They were free. Yeah. If you drop out, that's not a bum on a seat and someone else wants to go. That's we, right. We get that problem at Maine in the West. The problem with having a, a free event is that people will generally grab a whole bunch of tickets. Yeah. Um, so yeah we, we try to encourage people if you if you're gonna cancel your ticket let us know so we can give someone the ticket wants to be there yeah um because you know we've had like you know 30 to 50 people miss out on a show because uh, people didn't bring someone or they got five tickets and yeah. only one of them came um there's this one guy in particular we always see him order a ticket online we're like he never brings <laughs> anyone he gets five tickets five. and he always shows up alone <laughs> yep so now you know to add another five tickets totally when he buys a ticket you're like you're not bringing anyone bro we know we know well let's say 30 percent 30 percent for events so that what you do is you um uh, you oversell your event yeah right so um uh, because you've done 80 tickets i recommend that you do 100 not a bad idea. Yeah. Not a bad idea. Uh, so the there you go. Are, Maybe there are tickets. <laughs> yeah. I will I'll let you know, watch this space. Uh, do you have a website they can go to and check this out? Um, 
Was it just all on Facebook? That's PC? a good question. It is. It's on uh, my personal website, so MatthiasBowler.com. Um, also, go to MatthiasBowler.com forward slash Compassinos, and it's there's a link to the Eventbrite. Yeah, okay, the uh, Eventbrite link. Yeah. Yeah. So no, I totally recommend that you add twenty percent, twenty seats yeah, to a free a free event. Yeah, yeah. Um, I would be more bold to say maybe thirty. Because it's the, a free event. And Even if not, people can just sit in the aisles. Yeah, that's it. <laughs> um, that's what we always say. Like it all turns out that way. No, it never happens though. It never yeah, happens. Yeah, you yeah, might yeah. reach capacity, but you never, I've never. I think I may have done one event that was over capacity by yeah. about three or four people. Yeah, right. But that's not too bad. Yeah. Because um, then you take your staff out and you go. You guys can't be in here. <laughs> you guys got to get out because we've got we've got guests. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Yeah. Um, thank you, the volunteers, for making the way. <laughs> uh, um, yeah, um, yeah, no, totally, man. Totally inflate uh, your ticket sales on a free event. I totally recommend that. Uh, they even do it for paid events. Yeah, I've talked to a lot of uh, ticketers. Because uh, yeah, right. well, when you're doing things like this, you try and get as much information as you can. Um, so, talk, you know, talk to people. Because talk to people that are doing what you're doing. And you'll perhaps avoid a pitfall that you, know, you don't need to experience. Yep. And uh, some people would say to me, you know, even 50%, do 50% over for a free event, depending on what the pool is. Um, yeah, wow. If it's a celebrity free event, it will go. Everyone will show up. But if it's not a celebrity event, <laughs> yeah, you've, yeah, got yeah. To, you've got to create the space. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So. It's, it's thankfully, like, the numbers aren't too crazy where mm. it's, um, but... Uh, I, I feel like I know quite a few of the people that are going, so... <laughs> yeah, well, yeah, no, but there gets to a layer where, you know, that you don't know everyone's date and you, yeah, don't know, you, don't know, right. you don't know what argument they've had that that's day. That's true, actually. That's true. That's <laughs> you don't know everyone's true. date, so... That's very true. So, uh, I think have a think about it and then have a think about your waiting list and go, can I just add them? Yeah. You might be able to just add your waiting list. True. You know? There you go. Because, yeah, because you, 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 I guess the fear comes from looking after the venue because the venue's looking after you and you're like, well, I don't want to, I don't want to be a jerk and bring all these people to your venue and then think about what you're saying. Yep. <laughs> of course you do. <laughs> yeah. Sorry, you guys got to wait out here. You have to go and drink at the bar. Yeah. Look, worse comes to worse. They can sit at a bar. Like, that's, that's still right. pretty good. <laughs> yeah, totally. Totally, man. So, yeah, totally. Just yeah. open the floodgates let yeah. everyone go. That's yeah. what I say. Yeah. Let no, but it's going to be good. It's, there's a little Q&A as well because oh, yeah. myself and Miller and hopefully the composer. So, okay. yeah. 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 Oh, well, yeah, you've got to get the composers out there. I don't think they get enough. Uh, they, they've, got, they've got to get the dust off them. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. You know, they don't I, get out often. I mean, the unsung hero of this film as well is the, the composition. Like, you know, it, it really just stepped it up a notch. And even the sound design, like, uh, you know, Patagonia isn't an easy place to shoot sound because, mm. of, the, because of the wind and Ooh. whatnot. So, um, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it. Yeah, the, there was a lot of sound design that went into this. <laughs> yeah, uh, imagine, imagine so. Well, you got to feel that space. I think sound. I've always said that sound is the silent killer. Um, no one, because everyone thinks about, I want this shot, and I want it this way, and I want that. And they're usually one of their last considerations is sound. Yeah. Because um, if you can't hear a film, you don't have one. It's so, and you, you know what? It's like the, it's like the difference between like amateur and professional as well mm. like you it can look incredible the, but the moment the sound mm. is bad like you can just tell and yeah. you know that you're not watching something that sounds right speaking of speaking of soundtracks what are you doing to us Nate? <laughs> you, got, you got something playing oh you've got is it the oh you got That's the film casinos, oh oh wow well. where'd you get that from it's a trailer. It's a trailer. <laughs> I was about to say, like, I didn't leave that on my machine, did I? I'm like, I mean, oh, no, what have I done? <laughs> it's, <laughs> it's, it's coming out on this podcast. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, no, totally coming out on the 26th of February. The that, event's the 26th. That, and then 27th. And 27th online. Uh, so there's that uh, YouTube Vimeo release. Vimeo. Vimeo, Vimeo release. release. Yeah, yeah. Lardy da he's on Vimeo. He's on, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh, um, more, a lot of people have Vimeo this day, these days. Yeah. Totally. I, I think I have a YouTube account somewhere, but I don't think I've posted on it since no, I was I'm just, like... <laughs> I'm not, I'm not classy enough to be on Vimeo. I'm more of, the, I'm more of your YouTube whore types. You know? <laughs> I'm your YouTube street corner guy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you guys in your parlours of Vimeo. <laughs> Actually, no, seriously, I should probably get a Vimeo account, really. I should. It's yeah, a good probably. call. It's a good call. Yeah. I mean, why not have both? That's right. Uh, but, you know, people say this to me all the time. Why don't you have this other platform, you know? If you're on Facebook, they go, well, you've got to get Instagram. 
Oh, and then, oh and then, you got to be on Twitter. And you're like, okay, so that's three platforms now I've got to pay time to. Yeah. Um, and you go, well, you can link them all together. And, you know, well, they're not, it's not the same thing. You've got to operate in one and the other. Yeah. Because um, my Instagram sucks. I have a, I have the shittiest Instagram. Nate will be the first to tell me. <laughs> <laughs> my lips are sealed. <laughs> um, my Instagram's terrible. Like it's, it's okay for the page you train, but I don't do anything in between. I just don't have time because I've got so many things on the boil. And then you go, well, you know, running a couple of websites, and on top of that, I'll do the YouTube channels, yep. and then on top of that, now I've got to do a Vimeo channel. Yeah, that's just another platform. I've got to service. Yeah, I I never did the Facebook for some reason. I I never oh, did God. like I never did the Matthias Bowler filmmaker Facebook page. Where well, I, do you have a production company? You don't have one. I don't have it's one. Just, yeah. you're just your... maybe if I if I decide to make one, I'd need a Facebook page. But... Yeah, it's a good way to do it. Yeah, because then you've got um, if you have a, a production company, um, you can have so many things work under that banner. It's you, it's people you work with, and yeah. then you can do associations with. Yeah, and you can create your own page where it's not so. I find it's not so. Uh, like narcissistic in a way where you go, oh, look, this is me on uh, doing this. Yep. Yep. Um, you can have like your own third person doing it and everyone can, uh, and it's a group con- uh, contribution yep. uh, when you do do it like that. Um, yeah, I find it weird. I'd be like, oh, he's sharing my own page just all the time. It is <laughs> weird. Know? We're but speaking of narcissism. It is a bit narcissistic. <laughs> but, uh, um, says I the do... guy has a show called The Pagey <laughs> Train. Yeah. But uh, I do have an Instagram <laughs> and Instagram is like, Instagram is awesome. I, I reckon... Yeah, you're like, an Instagram guy? I'm an Instagram guy and I get a lot of jobs from Instagram. Yeah, I think okay. it's because it's a visual it's platform. It's a visual platform. That's a very, yeah. good, that's a very big point. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I, I, I don't know. Uh, I've, I've got to get out there more. <laughs> this is more guys. work, man. Got boost that Instagram Guys account. just want me to work all the time. <laughs> <laughs> Whilst you're at it, make a Snapchat. For the <laughs> yeah, I've got to do a, yeah, got to do, got to do a Snapchat <laughs> yeah, and then, yeah. you know, oh gosh. Yeah. Uh, I remember when Snapchat first came out. I was a bit perturbed, I must say. You know. It, yeah, I wasn't. I wasn't into it. Yeah, I because I, I, I don't know. I got the occasional um, dick pic from people. Who were like, <laughs> you're sending me dick pics, man. Occasional. I don't know you. Why are you sending me this? <laughs> and it's like, <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> no, but it would. Like, because yeah. you don't know these people, and you get, and then you get well, other kind of uh, ones where ladies are doing uh, unusual things and they're advertising certain yeah. services. You're like, I don't think I want to be on Snapchat. Yeah, yeah. This yeah. is this is too much. Yeah. Uh, but I think it evolved from there because you had the you know the photo that you would make and then it would disappear um i mean it did but then it got stories and then uh instagram took that so now that's then, right then i left snapchat because stories was in instagram really. oh, man, i want so many it's different ones like oh whatsapp snapchat messenger facebook <laughs> too instagram many, too many Man, we're just glued to it. I'm yeah, totally so glued bad. to it. I mean, that's why I admire you, man, not being on Facebook. Like, good for you, man. I'm, I'm on Facebook. <laughs> <laughs> I'm on Facebook. Don't get me wrong. I just don't have the filmmaker pay- Facebook account. Oh, I okay. Share everything on. Oh, okay. You, yeah. uh, well, you just need to, you need to be like the rest of us. You just need to sell out and do yeah, it. Maybe, you, yeah, maybe. You just got to sell out. You got to yeah, sell your soul. Like page. Yeah, you heard it here first. Like my page on Facebook. Yeah, yeah. Well, um, it'll be out soon. It'll involve the word Matthias. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> or maybe Bola. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Bola films. Yeah, Bola films. <laughs> Bola. Yeah. yeah. I think you need to remarket that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Mm. So it comes out on Vimeo on the twenty seventh of uh, February. Um, uh, let's go. Let's talk about the festival because um, I, I have a, um, a different ex- experience of the festival. Obviously, I'm at the front of it. I'm not behind it, if that makes sense. Like I'm in the projection room, or I'm you know on the uh, you know on the the floor, you know trying to inspire everyone. Hosting, yeah, hosting. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, um, lighting a fire under everyone as I usually, <laughs> as I try to do. I hope I do. You definitely do. <laughs> <laughs> it's like one of those meetings at the docks. Like I'm, a, I'm the head of a union. I'm like, right, we're going on strike. We're making films, right? Who's in? <laughs> I think, uh, yeah, I do. I do um, go a bit crazy at those events. I um, mean, why wouldn't you? <laughs> oh, I, know, I just love it though. Yeah. I love it so much. Um, but th- that's my experience at Made in the West. Um, like, what's your experience at Made in the West? Like, tell me about coming down the red carpet and seeing your film on that big screen. Yeah. Oh, I mean. It's so good. It's such a good event. Like, I I went the year before, so 2018 I went for the first time. Oh, yeah? Um, because of Bina. 
Shout out to Bina. Yeah, she always gets <laughs> She's the shout out queen yeah, on the show. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, which was cool. And, you know, I was just like, this is such a sick event. You know, mm. red carpet, lights, mm. huge cinema, like unreal. Like I just can't believe I got the VMAX. Yeah. Oh, it's so good. Comfier seats too. And it's just like. Man, the seats go a long way. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. When I yeah. do the tech test, I remember the first time doing the tech test, I sat in the seat. I'm like, this is fucking awesome. Yeah. This is so comfortable. And then you've got a four story screen in front of you. Um, it's unreal. It's the biggest I've definitely seen the film. Yeah. And probably the biggest I'll ever see the film, <laughs> <laughs> uh, which is awesome. Like, and, Well, it's and- good to get Australian films on these spaces, to get them in the spaces. So, big shout out to Event Cinemas. Yeah, definitely. Shout out. Huge mm, shout out. Huge shout out to those guys. A VMAX shout out. <laughs> uh, a VMAX shout yeah, out, totally. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Cinema 11, we love you. <laughs> um, even to know that there's a Cinema 11 because there's 10 that precede it. That's and crazy, there's one that's yeah. after it. Yeah. So there's 12 cinemas at that establishment. But yeah. knowing that you're. Uh, and uh, yeah, 11 is one of my favorite numbers too. So there you go, 11 11. <laughs> yeah, 11 11. That's it. It's good luck. Good. Good. Does that ever happen to you? You know, when you. All the time. You always get 11 on yeah. your watch? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I always do. Are you a, are you a superstitious person? I can be. I try you, not to be because I'm you, a scientific what you, thinker. <laughs> what do you think when you see eleven eleven? You like oh, good luck's coming. Good luck. You're mm. good luck. Yeah. yeah, good luck. Good fortune's happening. Yeah, I was Means a bad luck. Sick. I was a bad luck for a while. I was like, oh, something bad's gonna happen. But then, is that a nine eleven thing? When you see nine eleven, <laughs> you're like, oh, shit's going down. Yeah. yeah, and then I and then I like switched to like, oh, the spirits are trying to talk to me, and now I don't know what it. I don't know what it means. Yeah, but it's something. It's yeah, something. you've been on a journey. Yeah, yeah. I've been on that journey. Yeah. Uh, I don't know. I come. Yeah, I, I suppose like I've been thinking about this actually a lot lately. Um, you have I have different parts of my my mind. You know, I have like, the part of my mind that wants to write music I have the part of my mind that wants to write film I have the part of my mind that wants to direct film and then I have the scientific part where you start to go well how does that work you know what's the mechanics of that but then there's this other part that's spiritual where I think about you know humanity where we're all linked together we're all this super organism on this big ball of dirt or a little ball of dirt really yeah and uh, is there is there something else you know because you know I question religion I don't want to get into a religious conversation <laughs> um, I don't really want to get into that I mean you're about to get me started on aliens too whilst you're at it so <laughs> yeah man. well that's it you know uh, are there aliens I don't know I'd like to, I'd like to think there are um, I think uh, you know I share this with a lot of other uh, people I think you know um, you have to be sceptical you have yeah. to debunk you have to debunk yeah, yeah, yeah. but uh, uh, listening to some podcasts lately you know uh, that Bob Lazar well that's that's some interesting shit I haven't listened to it you haven't checked out Bob no. Lazar oh man check out Bob Lazar okay yeah yeah I'm, I'm keen <laughs> yeah uh, uh, Nate's a big uh, Bob Lazar fan yeah his eyes just lit up <laughs> <laughs> yeah uh, I don't know I like to I like to try and debunk those things because Oh, I don't know. Has a dude that was in a conspiracy heavy metal band, right? <laughs> I love it already. <laughs> right, I was in a conspiracy heavy heavy metal what were you band. Called? Alpha Degenerate. So we, you know, <laughs> we were degenerates because we weren't. You know, we were re- rejecting the system, yep. and we were the alpha males of doing yep. that. Yeah, right? yeah, yeah. So Alpha Degenerate, and uh, yeah, you know, we had songs like Jaded Insect, and you know. Uh, about these songs all about oppression the kennedy assassination 9 11 all of these things and we and our whole page was just littered with conspiracy theory <laughs> we'd be on the chemtrails <laughs> tinfoil great. hat fucking shit man <laughs> it was insane and then you start to believe and you get a bit cynical yeah you get a bit cynical yeah. um i think i come to con- the conclusion though it's worse than we think like there's no one at the there's no one at the wheel no it's just all it's just all random it's just you think that there's someone in charge but i don't think there is i think we're just you reckon yeah there's no one at the helm yeah right i don't reckon there's anyone in charge i don't know i think there's lizard lizard people (laughs) (laughs) and i think i think the earth is flat as well no no, no, you don't certainly not actually i'd be interested to talk to you if you if you were it's hard to get someone on the podcast that does that would be good that does think the earth's flat but you know uh, people that think the earth's flat you know they're all over the globe yeah. Um, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> they are really and they, they and they tweet on their phones that work yeah. on satellites yeah i just find that weird no i know I, I just yeah sometimes i i do get superstitious because you just have that coincidental feeling but then you have that what's it called confirmation bias 
you know, that confirmation bias where you're like, I want to believe in aliens. Yep. Um, yep. I want to believe that 1111 means something because I see it all the time. Yep. But then perhaps your brain's always looking for Looking 11. for it as well, yeah. More switched on to when you see 1111 as well. Yeah, because it stands out. It stands out, yeah. You know, uh, do, you know when you look at you know, a 24-hour clock, do you go 23, 23, you know? <laughs> <laughs> True. <laughs> we don't do True. that. You know, do we do the double numbers that way? Yeah. Um, but I, I, I guess I look at it from a scientific point of view. I get, I try to. It's still it's still anecdotal. Doesn't yeah. matter how I cut this cake. It's anecdotal. Um, I, I think I look at it from a point of view where perhaps I'm just in sync. Like I, I've had these patterns where I look at my watch and it just so happens my body clock tells me to look at it at that time because yep. I find something appealing about the the number eleven. Yeah. So I want it to be eleven. Yeah, and also like. I look at my phone so often that the chances of Chance. me seeing 11, 11 are like constantly yeah, I've got 12 chances a day, <laughs> yeah, man, yeah, yeah. and I get most of them. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 Uh, no, I, I definitely do. Um, but, no, uh, but I was, I, it's funny we go into spiritual stuff because when we were in Patagonia as well, I was mm. kind of interested to find out if, you know, how different. Well, their spirituality would be well are they religious well. like as in uh, christian religious or are they yeah I th- it's uh, funny like sort of i thought they'd be very very religious yeah. uh and it turns out a lot of them you know grew up with it but aren't really no, no so okay. uh which is which was quite interesting because you know uh chile and it is quite a catholic Mm. Uh, country in South America in general. Yeah, totally. Um, so it was, yeah, I was really interested to to know about that and whether and their thoughts on the afterlife and all that. So, um, yeah. Well, they are sort of agnostic or are they spiritual? Uh, no, I wouldn't or? say they were categorized in anything, really. I think they were just sort of like living in the moment. Wow, and they're in the now. In the now, and which is really important for them because if they were thinking about all this existential stuff, they They'd probably go crazy uh, mm. living by themselves for so long, uh, thinking about this stuff. Wow. Yeah. How fascinating. Yeah. It's just such a fascinating story. Yeah. Um, having these uh, people that are so isolated. And uh, I guess that's where my curiosity comes about their spiritualism. Yeah. You know, yeah. because like, you know, I, I, I grew up, I was raised to be, you know, air quotations, a, uh, a Christian. I uh, went to scripture. I got kicked out of the scripture pretty quickly. <laughs> But, you yeah. know, uh, that's another story for another podcast. Um, I asked the wrong questions. Um, <laughs> <laughs> you know, so, by, by the age seven, eight, I think I was out. Um, <laughs> but, uh, but that's where we come from, right? You know, if you look at it from an Anglo-Saxon, Australian sort of way. Uh, but then, you know, you, you go to learn that, you know, um, uh, first Australians, they had their belief in the land and how they would work with spiritualism. And they've got a pretty cool story. Yeah. And then you, you know, research other parts around the world. World, but I guess I get to this, you know, atheist slash agnostic point um, because of the world I live in. Yeah, you yep. know, but we're connected to everything, absolutely everything. More information, more. Yeah, it's it's hard. It's hard to. But are we connected mm. with ourselves? Oh, the deep to stuff. Get, to yeah. get existential. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I feel like less and less i guess i don't know i have no idea how yeah. i connected to myself deep questions it's a deep question i don't know i didn't know we we're gonna go down this path yeah. <laughs> interesting path to go down yeah yeah um but uh yeah uh what, what, what else can i spin out of this uh can i call it a dreidel are we on a dreidel right now is that a spinning thing? Yeah. Straddles a spinning thing? Yeah. That's religious as well. Oh, yeah, damn. Sure Just kind of <laughs> stuck in a web. Stuck in a web. Oh, well, look, it gives me a chance to do the promo for SSP. Guys, if you need a promo video done, um, email uh, me at um, stillsearchingproductions at gmail.com. We also do Foley. We do sound design, editing, you know, cinematography. I even do your voiceovers if you want. If you want the American movie guy. <laughs> That's uh, amazing. <laughs> <laughs> two men, one podcast. I'm out of one mouth. <laughs> <laughs> and the mob wanted in. <laughs> That's incredible. Yeah, so still searching productions at gmail.com. Uh, but yeah, speaking of Foley, um, you were talking about your sound. Yeah, you we were talking about sound design for campesinos. Did you have to do any of that in post? Uh, I didn't do any Foley. Mm-hmm. Uh, shout out to Rumble Studios who did all my sound post. Uh, a lot of it is sourced uh, mm-hmm. sounds. Mm-hmm. Uh, look, a lot of it was in camera, but it was pretty hard. Like the exteriors, mm-hmm. it was just muffled 
muffled audio and we didn't yeah. have a sound guy so yeah. it's not like uh we were constantly on top of it so a lot of like wind and uh just little sounds it's a pretty silent film like there's mm. not too much it is it, it, it does have its um it's sparse in that um in the sense of dialogue yeah yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. so um yeah, yeah, a lot of it was uh, done in post just because of the muffled nature of wind and, mm. you know, and it was great when we were doing post because, you know, I sent the film off and I'd seen it a million times because I edited it as well. And yeah. Just to get it back and really, really subtle sounds mm. that weren't there before just, like, boosts. Oh, it does it so everything, much. man. It so totally much. boosts it. Yeah, there's this one yeah. shot. There's this one shot that I love yeah. uh, of one of the dogs getting fed mm -hmm. uh, he gets fed and right before he gets fed he like shakes himself and he's like so excited to, to have food mm -hmm. and we didn't have the we didn't have good sound for that moment and yeah. you know the moment they put in like a dog just ruffling it it just changed like at that moment was just um you know you're just like oh like you're just looking at the dog you're just feeling for the dog yeah and just like and it's just like it's amazing something so small can do that yeah right? yeah well it's, it's that other dimension you've yeah. got to feel that other dimension that's what i was saying before sound is the silent killer man and if you even the most subtle sounds even sounds that are because they refer to it as um diegetic and non-diegetic so diegetic sounds are what you know I bump the table and yep. that's that sound, right? Yeah. But a non-diegetic sound is when I get a remote control and I click it. It doesn't actually make any sound. Mm. But if I... Yeah, yeah, yeah. People register that you've yeah. turned off the TV. It's you know, not on screen or, or something as well. Yeah. Like music as well. It's an unreal... Yeah, 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 yeah. that's another yeah, non-diegetic, yeah, yeah. right? Yeah. Um, so, the God radio. Yeah. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. All of these sounds that are within the film or out of the film. Uh, sometimes you can, you know, even transfer between the two. I think I like films that do the car radio and then it pulls into the score. Yeah, yeah. You know, doing things like it's that cool. is great. It's clever. Um, and... Uh, yeah, I just I just find even the subtlest sound can lift a scene. Um, I did one uh, for a friend, Josh. Big shout out to Josh. Uh, he got me to do some foley for. Um, it was a really windy uh, scene, so he lost all of his sound. So I had to do all the footsteps. I did the car door closing, but I noticed his knee hit the keys when he got into the car. So I put the. the That's the, amazing. So I got a yeah, set of yeah, keys yeah. and I like measured it and like, yep, these knees there. And I mimicked the sound of the wow. keys, and then I, you know, pulled it right down, and I put it, um, I put it to the rear of the of the field, because you can move sound around yeah, in yeah, the field, yeah. right? And uh, yeah, uh, you look at it, and I'd show it to someone. I go, real or not real? I go, no, that's real. I'm like, all of it's fake. Yeah. There's there's 203 sounds in there, and I made them all. But that's awesome. That's yeah. like, and it's that detail that makes it seamless as well yeah you know maybe if that key dangle wasn't there you'd be like something's not quite right about this i mean it's bizarre that but when you start doing it when you start doing foley you look at it you look at you know images differently you go that's that sound would exist there yeah and sometimes um it's like um lighting in a way sometimes the absence of sound the absence of sound is important because yep. you can really build tension with sound and then remove it yeah and then it's really built yeah you can really well, it was like that um the recently that uh, star wars film i don't know if you saw that but i haven't seen that one i haven't seen uh, it yet no no, 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 no not the recent one like ages ago but uh there's a moment where all the sound cuts out and they had mm -hmm. to actually put posters at the door like telling people oh by the way the sound cuts out it's not an issue with the cinema oh because they're trying to get their free fund <laughs> yeah yeah oh yeah, man yeah. look i yeah. gotta say i gotta say as a student i fucking did that several <laughs> times i'm not gonna mention any companies out there but uh there is a local cinema and you go into like sound dropped out at 20 minutes in and i am dissatisfied with my experience yeah and they go here's a free oh, movie ticket yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> get another one next week yeah, yeah. <laughs> hope you don't get the same guy <laughs> yeah <laughs> man i was eating rice and beans for three years i needed to go and see some films i was a film student and it was the only one way to do it two ways to do it actually Fair enough. two Fair ways enough. to do it at that time <laughs> oh there's still the same way you still go to um download people still download oh yeah yeah. I feel like it's less, but I have no idea really. Oh, I, I don't download anymore. Yeah. I've stopped downloading. Yeah. Uh, well, it's different because now I'm not a student and I don't, I don't have that issue. That's right, yeah. But they also made it so hard. It's so yeah. hard to do. Yeah. Um, but I, used, I didn't actually download um, back in those days. Yeah. I'd stream. Me neither, yeah. Yeah. Uh, I used to stream off uh, like Russian websites. Oh, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, Put Locker. Yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah what yeah. was another one? Uh, yeah. Like, uh, let me watch this.com, yeah. all this sort of stuff. Yeah. 
Because uh, I, I found, let me uh, watch this.com by accident because I got frustrated on Google going, let me watch this. <laughs> and then it came up with a website called let me watch this. I'm like, fuck, genius. that's genius. <laughs> I'm in. And then they get take that website down. You're like, where did let me watch this.com go? <laughs> Yeah. Like, how, do yeah. you, how did we evolve to these web searches in our life? <laughs> it's just weird. <laughs> but no, I don't do it anymore. Um, I've got rid of a few platforms, though. It's hard not to get Disney at the moment. Have you been watching The Mandalorian? I haven't. No. <sighs> it's no. fucking boss. Is it? Yeah, yeah. It's really I haven't, good. I haven't, I haven't taken the Disney Plus plunge yet, but yeah. I'm sure. Well, I've got mates who've got kids. Yeah. You gotta get, if you've got mates <laughs> with kids, go around, true, the, true. Go around their house because they've got Disney, right? <laughs> <laughs> go around and watch The Mandalorian. Yeah. Big shout out to Steve. Thank I'm you. I'm at the point where I've got way too many subscriptions. And it's just like, oh. I've cut them back. Yeah. I've cut them back, man. Yeah. I'm back just on the flicks. Just on the flicks? Just on yeah. the flicks. Got rid yeah. of Stan. Got rid of... Uh, what else was I doing? I don't think that was it. I've only had Stan and Netflix. Do you have Spotify? I've just gotten Spotify. I was yeah. doing the ads like a... Yeah. I'm that, I'm yeah. that YouTube hooker on Got the corner. That's yeah, me. Yeah, 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 yeah. I'll do the ads on YouTube too. Uh, I, I've, <laughs> I've thought about it a lot and I think the one streaming I couldn't do without is Spotify. Yeah. No, like, I'm, I'm glad I've, I've crossed over to yeah. paying for it. Oh, it's so different. It's fucking night and day, dude. It's yeah. fucking yeah. night and day. Oh, my God. Yeah. Uh, no, and, and then it makes you worry about all your other ads. It was good because I got the iWatch right and you can just like... <laughs> Pull the ads down, not listen. You just have a moment of silence. There you go. There you go. Ads over. Back up again. I guess the moment of silence is all right. Yeah. No, nah, you're impatient. I want my. Con- <laughs> yeah. I need my content before yeah. I want my content. Yeah. yeah exactly. <laughs> I want you to uh, laser um, implanted into my mind <laughs> from space. Okay. And I want it done in a millisecond. I want to experience five minutes in a second. And I want it. I want it shot into my brain from space. Can you do that? <laughs> is that impossible? Yeah. <laughs> No, we did the, uh, like, Spotify has that thing where you can see your year in review and you're mm. just like, it's pretty crazy how much music I listen to. Oh, man. That's good, though. I, I, I had a bit of a drought, though, because um, I, uh, I was that kind of crazy cat that would go around to people's houses with a hard drive. Not just a, like a, a, I mean, a hard drive that you got to plug in. Yep. Big, you know, yeah, back yeah. in the day, it was a terabyte. It was huge back then, especially for music. And I'd just download all of them library. I'd download their entire iTunes library. Yeah, wow. I've still got all of it. I've got all Did my you have those, like, permission things? Or, like, no, 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 yeah, those kind of problems. Like, no, no, yeah, no, no, yeah, no, no, no. It was, it was all copyright free. Well, no, actually, that's not right. Not It was de-copyrighted. Is that a good way to put it? <laughs> yeah. De-copyrighted. Um, there's probably some of it was probably legit. A lot of it, a lot of my mates have a lot of heavy metal that are they've legitimately taken off a CD and then given to me. Yeah, cool, cool. Uh, I don't know how legitimate that is. Even, like, I was looking back, actually, uh, about uh, six months ago on a copyright laws, just for shits and giggles, because I like to read crazy shit online. Um, but even a VHS, right? If you copy a VHS and give it to your mate, you've, fr- you've infringed copyright. You can't, you can't copy it. That makes no. sense, yeah. <laughs> um, but back in the VHS days, you just have to oh. put a little bit of um, sticky tape across the um, uh, copyright tab, and that's how you do it. That's amazing. Yeah, you don't know about this? Yeah, you, know, yeah. you weren't a part of the v, uh, VHS uh, uh, um, not the, not the, era? Uh, the, the I saw a lot of uh, <laughs> pirates at VHSs, but I didn't, <laughs> I didn't pirate them myself. Yeah, well, that's how you do it. Even um, because on, on the um, VHS, there was this little tab, and if you snapped it off... You couldn't write on it anymore. It was read only. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So you used to have to put some tape over that where the tab was ripped off, so that when you put it in the VCR, it was still right. Yeah, it was still right. um, re- uh, allowed to record. Yeah. You used to have to do the same thing with um, cassette tapes too. Mm. Recording off the radio. This is all this crazy shit, man. We used to. I, I, it was my job in the household to stop a film when ads were on, <laughs> to stop a record on TV, stop the record, anticipate. The return of the show and hit record again. All right. That's a skill. Well, here's where life gets fucking weird, man. I worked at a place called Media Hub for two years, and its job <laughs> is anticipating the return of a break. <laughs> That's wow. essentially what you do. You watch ads, programs on. Watch the program, ads are on, and you do that across 200 markets for like Channel 10, Channel 7, Channel 9. Yeah, wow. So you control an entire TV network at, at you know two or three yep. mouses. I say mouses because it's not Latin, okay? <laughs> An animal that's called a mouse would be mice. mice. But this is a technical bit of equipment called a mouse, which isn't Latin. 
There okay, so it's mouses. Just saying. Well, that's something you. I've had this. Oh, I don't know if it's right. <laughs> <laughs> that's just my humble little opinion on the uh, grammar of the grammar of mouses. Mouses. The grammar of the mouse. <laughs> grammar of the mouse. It sounds like some sort of hipster band. Grammar of the mouse. <laughs> <laughs> what the fuck were we on about, Matthias? Where um, were we going? Um, that's a good question. Mm. We're talking about something. We're talking important. about something important. We've done your film release. Oh, VHS. Oh, oh no. VHS. Yeah. That's right. Copywriting and stealing films. Cut it out, kids. Um, <laughs> I wouldn't say, look, I wouldn't say cut it out. Like, if you can't get media, you should have, you know, a right to media. And if you're getting copyrighted shit, it's probably garbage anyway. Right? It's not always as good as the real thing. Yeah. Um, I'm sure you could probably get some stuff that was bootlegged. But I'd always, when I'd stream stuff, you'd see, you know, a little uh running bar come up at the bottom not for public yep. consumption you know yeah yeah there'd be weird cuts in it you know um different endings like i've watched films i've watched something that i watched that was um pirated and then i'd watch it uh, when i bought the dvd and they're different <laughs> It yeah, wow. happen more often than not <laughs> man hilarious. yeah well the thing is like if i so saw someone went to the effort of changing the ending yeah, well, was, yeah, they change a lot of endings to films. They change the titles too. Uh, one really good example was um, Lucky Number Eleven. You ever heard of this film? No. Uh, it's got Bruce Willis in it as a hitman, which could be any Bruce Willis. <laughs> yeah. film. It's always a, he's always playing a hitman. Um, but Lucky Number Eleven was called The Wrong Man in Australia. Yeah, right. In the states, it was called Lucky Number Eleven, which was the name of the horse, which yep. is one of the the tropes in the film. Uh, trope? I don't know if you use that word right. One of the things in the film that was centred around. Uh, that would be a trope, right? I don't no. know. Hey, look up trope for us, Nate. Well, well, trope would be something common. Or well, I don't know. What's a trope? Something common. I've lost my way on the common, word trope. Commonly used in genre or something. Yeah, it's like a genre trigger. Trope. Yeah, yeah, genre trope. It's like, does my internet work anymore? I'm slow. See, slow. this is why you watch a DVD, people. Yeah. Don't stream. Watch a DVD. <laughs> your internet will crash. <laughs> no, but I would. I would I'd totally watch um, uh, stuff um, streamed online. And then I go, I fucking love that movie. I'm totally going to buy it. Yeah. And then I'd go find it. Um, I wouldn't buy it brand new. I'd always go to... Uh, but around then, video stores were shutting down. I, I know this is, this is going to sound terrible, but I, I used to get excited when a video store would close down. Oh, because of the sales? Sales, oh, man. Oh, same. <laughs> I was one of those guys going there and I'd same. load up. Same. Load up with yep. everything. Yep, yep, yep. Even shit, I was like, I don't even know if I ever watched that. Yep. It's, it's a dollar. Shout out to Blockbuster Blacktown. I was there all the time. Yeah. <laughs> Shut it down. <laughs> oh, man. I, I, had, uh, I, I used to rent movies so often. Like I had debt collectors chase me once for an overdue. Really? Yeah. Yeah. I had an overdue debt film. Debt collectors? Yeah, had to buy it out. Okay, yep, I, I, I hired a movie in Queensland, moved to Perth, got to Sydney, they found me, and they wanted their $33. <laughs> Chased That's down fair with enough. Got enough. Ch- yeah, man, they did their job. Times are tough. <laughs> I don't even remember, you know, not taking it back. You know, maybe I did take it back, and they just, I just got fleeced $33. <laughs> <laughs> Who knows? <laughs> um, oh, the, I've, got, I've got something for you. Made in the West TV, man. I've got Made in the West TV coming out soon. Mm. So, uh, well, thanks for doing the show for Main the West TV, by the yeah, way. But how did you find that experience? For, thanks just for running a, the show. Yeah. Yeah. Well, thanks to WSU for um, sponsoring the show as well. Um, but uh, yeah, uh, what was your experience like on the show? I just always get curious because um, I've only done it twice. Mm. Um, did you have a good time on the show? Yeah, it was great. It was yeah. great. It's cool because uh, you know you're talking to. It was probably like you're talking about the deep stuff. You're talking about the political stuff as well, mm. and it was like. It was good to sort of be around other filmmakers as well that are in mm-hmm. a similar position and just talking about Western Sydney and diversity and um, yeah. you know, things that are really important right now as well. So Yeah, well, I, cool. I like to get away from the word diversity. I like, I like to yeah. get to in- inclusive, you know, being inclusive. inclusive. It's, yeah, yeah. I, think, I think we're onto something with that. Yeah. Because diversity is like, it's like this um, quota that's right. scenario. Yeah. And that's what yeah, we man. spoke about heaps in the yeah. show, actually. Yeah, because it was strange that you guys were starting to talk about that and Neil was talking about it because I was, I'm like, this is the stuff that I've been thinking about for ages. Um, you know, we would have people come up to us at Made in the West a couple of years ago and they go, yeah, good on, good on you guys for being diverse. And we we're like, that's not what we're doing. Yeah. We're not actually, you know, we're not targeting anyone. 
except for filmmakers. You know, there's no, there's nothing, it's not about diversity, it's about our region. Yeah. And it just so happens, if you do a cross-section of our region, you will find diversity. I think that's the, you know, they got the cart before the horse there. Yeah. You know, yeah, yeah. I think the, the, the what's driving it is the content. It's the stories, it's the people that drive it. That's what's important. Yeah, it doesn't matter where they come from or what they do and who they marry. It's not. It's got nothing to do with it. Yeah, that's just that's just it happens to be whatever circumstance one would be in. Yeah, um, it's like another way of saying, oh, well, it's just not not a white guy. That's essentially what they're saying. <laughs> yeah, yeah, not yeah, a white guy. yeah, yeah. Like, oh. Which isn't true. Either. That's not true. Yeah, um, yeah. There's plenty of people who win awards at uh, Maine in the West. Um, and it's all to do with their movie, not them. <laughs> That's right. Yeah, totally. I can guarantee you that if my film like <laughs> had a terrible story or didn't like it, wouldn't have. I wouldn't made it. it. Oh, it's man, not like, because it had subtitles or something. No, <laughs> not at all. That's what I mean. That's what I said it before. Like it's, um, it's definitely something that uh, is, ma- you know, is a wave out there, and we're riding this wave. We're not just making it; we're riding it. Yeah. And I think um, there's a few of us out there that are adding energy to that wave. Yeah. Um, but that wave is coming regardless. Yeah. I'm just glad that we're on it. Yeah. yeah. I'm, I'm privileged to yeah. be on it. But um, I think it's because of like things like made in the west that uh these stories can also be told as well like yeah. and that that is like where the inclusivity comes you know because it's every everyone has the and with camera gear and with mm. everything like anyone can tell this story now which is awesome. totally it's very accessible it's very accessible that's what i i felt like I, I always like to emulate movies when i do speeches at made in the west yep um like i've done a fight club one you know um you know first rule you know yep, yep, <laughs> yeah sort of yeah stuff. yeah yeah um, and I wanted to do a Wolf of Wall Street, but I didn't have the balls to do it because I didn't want it to come off the wrong way. I'm like, you know, if you've broken up with your girlfriend, well, go out there and pick up a camera and start filming. <laughs> Hate your fucking job? Well, then go out there, pick up a camera and start filming. You know, I wanted to go fully Wolf of Wall use Street it, on it and it. use yeah, that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I thought, oh, if that comes off, if I get too drunk and make that... It actually, it's still like... I'm surprised like, he didn't do it. Did <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it was pretty... That's one of the loosest festivals I've done. Um, yeah. Well, it, well, normally, um, the, the strange thing was, my, that was the biggest bar tab I've ever paid at a festival for myself, and I didn't buy myself beer. I bought everyone else beer, and <laughs> well, other people bought me the beer. Wow. Well, yeah. There you go. So, people kept shouting me beer. Yeah, so... so I, who, who were you shouting me? Everyone else. <laughs> yeah. I, was, uh, I know I bought a round for Larry Emder, that's for sure. Yeah. Like, he's like, oh, I can't get a beer in line. I'm like, let me get you a beer, Larry. <laughs> <laughs> Note to self, hang around you at the next Made in the West Film Festival. Yeah, I know. I do, I do, I do the old Roscoe point. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That guy, get him a beer. Yeah, yeah. Thank you, thank you. Um, yeah, no, enormous bar tab this year. <laughs> oh, no. it, was, it was a bit uh, outrageous, actually. Yeah, 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 yeah. So, I've got to rein it in. Stop shouting me beers, people. Yeah. <laughs> well, you had your wedding the same week, wasn't it? Yeah, man. So, was... it was a big bar tab sort of week. Oh, gosh. Uh, <laughs> yeah, it was a big everything kind of week. But yeah. we did the, oh, man, uh, insane month. Funny that you bring that up. Uh, I started, because uh, we had the EP launch for the band. And the week later, got married. The week later, did Made in the West. And two weeks later, did the TV show. And then the week in the the weekend in the middle, went away on a holiday. You know, which is our Made in the West holiday. It wasn't yep. the wedding holiday. Yeah, yep, it wasn't yep. a honeymoon or anything. It was well because we do the um, uh, Made in the West uh, in November, and you usually around then a whole bunch of SSP crew we've been working on year on, you know, projects left, right and center. So we do this one weekend where we go away. Uh, generally it's an excuse for me to go bodyboarding and everyone else to get drunk. But, uh, <laughs> <laughs> um, so we had that. So it was like five weeks of just an absolute onslaught of doing work. And, uh, in between that, Misty's doing her PhD and Jeez. running SSP. And I think I was running it's full one. on. Yeah, I was running a TV show at the time as well. It was just... Uh, yeah. How are you still functioning? I don't know, man. <laughs> oh, man, look, uh, a big shout out to the Purflings out there. Um, I call them the Purflings because um, I always come in peace. <laughs> and um, they... <laughs> no, man, they just uh, going out, um, having a few drinks with uh, um, family and, uh, you know, uh, going surfing. You know, that's how I recharge. Yeah. Uh, get in touch with nature. Get in touch yep. with um, that's family. Great. That's, That's how you great. do it. Um, I think someone uh, someone was on the show before and they, 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 they said something that really hit home with me and it was, um, oh gosh, who was it? 
It might have been Vaughn actually on the TV show. You know, don't forget to live. Yeah. You know, because as filmmakers, we sacrifice so much. Yeah. You know, because you work every weekend. Yeah. And, and you're away from your family. Yeah. Um, your family suffers because of your passion. Um, but yeah, you got to remember to live. You yeah. You got to keep those connections because what's the point of telling a story if you don't have connection? And also, what stories are you going to tell if you're not living? <laughs> yeah, if you're not living, what are you telling? What stories yeah. are you telling? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So don't forget to live, kids. Don't forget to live. There you go. Um, I think that's a really valuable lesson that I've learned. Um, but this year is the year of discipline for me. Um, discipline. Yeah, because I. Uh, well, a lot of people go, hey, Roscoe, you're very motivated. You're a very motivated dude. You get a lot of shit done. I'm like, that's true. But yeah, I'm- I was pretty impressed with, like, all the things you're doing here. <laughs> <laughs> I'm a loose cannon, though. I do. I work hard. I play hard. And uh, I think, yeah, this is the year for discipline for me. Just, uh, it's not working yeah, so well so yeah, far. Yeah. I've had a few good weeks, a few bad weeks. Married life, you know. So. <laughs> oh, look, it doesn't change. Yeah. Married life, it doesn't change. Your married life, um, it's, still, it's still the same. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. But I, I will say this, though. Um, uh, having a whole bunch of people that you love in a room, uh, celebrating uh, with someone that you love more than anyone in the world, uh, does trigger something in your heart. It's something yeah. that I recommend for people that are ready for it. Like, that's not something you jump into. But, uh, yeah, it certainly is a fantastic... It's the best day of my life. Getting married awesome. is the best day of my life. No doubt about it. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And Made in the West was the second best day, I imagine. <laughs> uh, I don't know. Um, uh, dropping into a two and a half metre wave on New Year's was pretty yeah, good. Yeah, that sounds pretty good. That was, that was pretty cool. <laughs> you can, that's hard to top. Um, maybe if I jump out of a plane or something this year. I think I might do that. Discipline. Just, discipline. Yeah. Discipline. <laughs> discipline. Don't, put, don't take risks. <laughs> Yeah. No, no, it was good to have you guys on the show. It really was. Um, Because, well, this year, because we had the technical issues on the show, so now I've had to set it up for um, an internet release. So we're doing an internet release for Mainland West TV for 2019. But uh, this year we'll be aiming for Aurora, and I'm going to try and get it out onto the other community networks. So Melbourne, Melbourne, Brisbane, Adelaide, hopefully Perth as well. Um, Even though it's a Western Sydney region show um i think it still showcases you know it's filming. important to get that out anyways yeah that's right I encourage them to come over yeah. and make films that's what i like to see them do and they do some people do they do come over to make films which is really great to see um uh, to welcome people to our region to make films and look it's totally accessible um it's hard to make films in sydney city because you've got traffic you've got oh. parking yep uh rent of spaces is huge um compliance is harsh ridiculous um permits boy it is so hard to make movies in sydney man yep uh, western sydney on the other hand a lot easier bloody easy you go to Campbelltown council and say i want to shoot a movie in the main street they go how long do you want <laughs> are we going to be on tv <laughs> uh I, I've, I've talked to guys in Parramatta council like yeah you can do that as long as we're in the film I'm like oh easy Great. put you in the film no problem yeah, yeah. Um, now I had, I had lined up to, I still want to do this. It's uh, one of the scenes that, I, um, for a feature that I've written called bad apples and there's a CBD siege scene and That's mad. yeah, well, you've got to get a bit, a bit of help to do that. Cause you need the high rises yep. and you've got to shut down the street for a day. Yeah. You know, need a little bit of budget. Maybe I should do a Patreon. Yeah. <laughs> uh, <laughs> you heard it first. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe I should do a Patreon, but, uh, yeah, uh, I was, I was talking to a few people, uh, in the, and the council are like, yeah, we'll, we'll shut down the street for you, huh? As long as we're in the film. Yeah. I'm like, yeah, but you might get shot or something in the film. They're like, even better. That'd be great. Yeah, I'd love to die in a movie. They'd be like, wow. <laughs> People are just so hungry to make so movies. Keen. Yeah, so yeah, keen. Yeah. Even the councils are keen to make yeah, movies, awesome. man. That's awesome. So it's really easy to get a permit. Um, now New South Wales rail is a bit difficult. They can be difficult. Very- um, City trains, yeah. Yeah, I know. Like you know, I know a lot of people go gorilla on that though. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I'd never go no, gorilla. On, no. I'd never go gorilla on, <laughs> on that. No. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, actually, I don't mind going to spaces like that and recording atmoses. So getting atmos, train atmoses, plane yeah. atmoses. Sometimes it's if good. I'm, yeah, if I've got my gear on me, I don't mind recording. Yeah, I, I started doing this thing ages ago where like whenever I'm in a space that I'm like. I don't know, it has some sort of important sound or something. I'll, mm-hmm. I'll record it, even just with my phone or something. But yeah. I find, like, even on a holiday sometimes, you know, you might be at a waterfall or something, you just record the sound. Mm. That sound, like, just that one minute of audio, like, takes me back. 
way more yeah. than a photo. It's or amazing how sound does that. I think it's been one of the, a really big theme of our, our show tonight. Sound, um, yeah. Is sound. Um, because sound, like, uh, uh, this is an example. There's a few examples I give to people, right? Um, if you were to take 25 frames of footage and remove a frame and then show someone that, that second, they won't notice the frame missing. If you did the same equivalent for sound, they'll notice immediately. Yep. They'll hear it pop. They'll <laughs> yeah. hear it pop, right? Because um, if you like, if you hear a car accident on the on a on a block, you'll go. It was over there. You know, you'll hear right. where it is. That's right. So you actually hear things before you see them. Yeah. Right. Even though sound travels a lot slower than light, you hear things before you see them. Um, I, uh, when I've um, uh, had interns as um, editors, uh, I teach them to edit ear to eye. Because the instinct to edit is eye to ear. I want to have a picture and then the audio. Yeah. But I, I try to teach people, edit the audio. If you have a piece of music and you edit an image to music, you'll edit rhythmically. Yep. Yeah, yeah, And yeah. images are rhythmic, are rhythm. That's what they are. They have a, they have a rhythm attribute to them. And, uh, yeah. Well, editing is all about rhythm as well. It's all about rhythm. So. It's, it's not just about banking pictures together. Yeah. It's about rhythm. Uh, it's a musical experience, uh, editing film, uh, and uh, that's why the sound is that silent killer. Uh, I also, um, uh, uh, you know, uh, what was I saying about um, people and sound? So I used to teach people, you know, remove a little bit of sound, um, but yeah, edit ear to eye. That's right, edit ear to eye because then you you will do it rhythmically. And oh, that's right. The other thing, if you think of a song from your childhood. Right, you will uh, if you hear it on a ra- on a radio, it will take you back immediately to that memory. That memory, and it'll be quite vivid. And that's what I find when I hear songs that I haven't heard in a long time. You're like, oh yeah, 19, 1995 high school on the way home. Yeah, about to go about to go down the bush and smoke a spliff with some friends. You know, <laughs> um, <laughs> it's, you know stuff like it's that. True though, like like certain. I find like certain albums, mm. especially like, will remind me of a time, mm. or uh, you know, like yeah, I don't I don't know what it is about it, but I guess it's like maybe the first time you heard it, or but well, it takes you back as well. And well, I got theory. I got a theory about it. I've, I've, got a, I've thought about this a little bit. Um, I think it's about vibrations. So your brain works on vibrations, right? Everything works on vi- vibration. And these vibrations are like keys and they open doors. So you hear that vibration, it triggers image. Yep. You know, certain sounds trigger image. And that's why diegetics and non-diegetics work. That's how it works in your brain. Mm. Like computers don't make noise, but you watch a computer in most films, they're making a lot of beeps and whistles <laughs> and like all kinds of weird yeah, sounds yeah. that you never ever hear. Yeah. But we accept that because you go, well, if we leave that naked, your brain goes... That's dead space. It's it's a dead dimension. Um, you need to fill that dimension. Um, so yeah, I, 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 again, I just love building soundscapes because I just look at images differently now that yeah. I've been doing it for a long time. Well, it's like the uh, like the knife slicing through the air. You know, probably doesn't yeah. actually <laughs> make that much of a sound in real life. Yeah, 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 yeah. It doesn't. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know, it doesn't do that. No. You know. Um, yeah, I don't know. And I was always really creative with my voice as well. Uh, I do this one often. I've done this one a few times. There's the um, the match. A lot, of, a lot of match for someone. You know, you know? I right. <laughs> love making sounds, man. I love it. That's incredible. Yeah, I love doing it. That's incredible. Oh, the, ones, the ones that I... Uh, uh, so that's how you do your foley. I've done a match <laughs> by doing foley. Uh, in fact, I did one for um, RBM. Big shout out to RBM. Um, there was a... Uh, we were talking about this before. A, a remote control click. I did the, I did the click. I went... That was simple. it. That's yeah. simple. Yeah, yeah. You go, I can just do it. Oh, oh, that doesn't sound right. And then you go find things that click like a lid pen. You yeah, know, sometimes lid. you can just do it better yourself. Like, yeah. Oh, no, I can do that. Yeah. That's it. That's it, yeah. Um, but you do other things like... <clears throat> break your neck uh, and stuff like that. It's all fake, though. I felt that. You felt it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, the ones that I like to impress the kids with is the, the, the foghorn. Uh, this this started, um, I was walking with mates through fog and it just sort of happened accidentally and everyone laughed their ass off and they got a kick out of it. So, I, I just always did it, you know. I'm so keen. <laughs> right? It's going to make sounds, right? 
Um, I love doing it. Love that's doing it. Just for everyone at home, that's, that's not the sound that he's just putting in the edit. <laughs> <laughs> I've done it as a uh, post. Yeah, yeah. Well, I don't I don't like. Don't get me wrong. If I can't make the sound, I will go and get it off the internet. Yeah. I will yeah. find a way, and then I'll usually EQ it and I'll make it mine somewhere. But generally, I make all of them. I love to make all of them. That's awesome. Yeah, and I just can look at it, and people go, "How did you know that sound was there?" I go, "Don't you see it?" I see sound. It's yeah. really bizarre. It's yeah. a synesthetic experience. Yeah. What's that whole thing as well is like when you're sound designing, it's like, yeah, there's what's on screen, but it's also what's around. What can't you see that's happening as yeah. well? And, you know, what's happening behind the camera? What's happening a block away? Mm. What's, you know, and how does that add to the, to the world? Yeah. Um, but the ones I like doing are repairs. I do repairs for people when their sound's broken. I fix their sound for them. Uh, I love doing that. Uh, I used to hate it, it's, but it, it became a thing that I liked. That sounds hard. It is. Repairs are hard. <laughs> the ones I hate, though, are file recovery. When I have to do file recovery for people, I hate doing that. It's fucking stressful. Yeah. yeah. Oh, I don't think I've never not... I've never not recovered one. Never not. What do you mean? I mean so, do you, like, do you, like break open a hard drive and yeah that kind of stuff i've done that, um, done that. i've done like a, one of those like, oh, light the, rooms the ones that i hate the most these are the ones i hate people that don't use a clapper and they're doing a, 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 a like a creative piece so they, they've done 200 shots and they didn't clap any of them none of them have a name they didn't go scene one act one shot one take one they didn't do any of that they just started shooting and they're going and action that was it and is the audio separate as well? Yep. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Audio separate. <laughs> yeah. And then, so the, it will come uh, up on the computer. Oh, sorry, it will come up on the file name. You know, uh, DMX00149. Yeah. What the fuck does yep. that mean? Yeah. Nothing. It's just a batch <laughs> file name. And then you've got to find the corresponding audio. So then you've got to listen to both and then you marry them by a name. Yep. And then you can pluralize it and then you can package it for them. Yeah. So I've done a lot of that for people. That's tedious. Yeah. That's tedious. But my, what are my favorite? <laughs> oh, man, my, I do a lot of this over the phone for people. They'll ring me in some state. They'll go, Ross, I know you know how to fix this. <laughs> <laughs> I got this problem. And you're like, okay. I had, I had one they were doing a feature film. They edited a feature film with a trackpad. Okay. You know, like, you get a mouse. Yep. They had a trackpad on Final Cut Pro. It was Final Cut Pro 7, this was. They're doing a trackpad, Final Cut Pro. I'm like, that's just murder. I can't a imagine trackpad. A trackpad editing. That slow. Slow, man. That's like driving a a, a, a scooter in like <laughs> Bathurst. Yeah. <laughs> it's yeah. fucking slow. <laughs> You'd hope that they were like they knew all the keyboard shortcuts at least. Not a lot of people do. I teach people the the shortcuts. Really? I, yeah, I build my own. I'm really new. Yeah, that's fair enough. I build my own. That's fair enough. Well, even for the show, I do. Um, uh, shift control W, which is uh, create multicam clip. Yep. So I'll do I'll uh, I'll merge all the clips together, create multicam clip, and then take it into angles. What's this in? Final ten. Final ten. Yeah. 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 Oh, you can do the same thing in uh, Premiere. Yeah. 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 Uh, you got to be versed in, in both. I'd like to be more versed in Avid though. I haven't used a lot of Avid. It's just, it's just a whole other ball game, isn't it? <laughs> Avid is like Pro Tools. Yeah. It's very Pro Toolsy. Yeah. yeah, and I like Pro Tools. Don't use it, but I like it. Yeah, I mean it's good if you have multiple people that need to access the project. I yeah, guess. yeah, it's like a team. TV shows and features. You yeah, know, better for your color correctors. Hey, can you color correct, man? I'm fucking horrible at it. I'm, <laughs> I'm hey. terrible. Watch my films. You'll see that. It's horrible. <laughs> I wouldn't say I. I wouldn't offer it as a service <laughs> no, i don't do color correction uh, um i i understand it oh, I, can I, like, do it. I get it i, I get, get the it. science but um i've even got the methodology yeah i, I know how to do it yeah. i just can't I just, yeah it's a it's a really particular skill it's very particular yeah. shout out to matt fez who graded my yeah my short film. i fucking love graders you graders <laughs> out there you make our lives look so much better yeah you really do yeah um yeah no uh, color grading and animation man just no thanks yeah no. I, I, t I took like a bit of a vow to myself ages ago and i was just like not fucking animate nah, <laughs> not doing it <laughs> oh man keyframing is so tedious, tedious and you need you need serious hardware to do it too yeah you need you need fast computing to do yep. it 
I can't. By the time I'm doing animation, my computer's five years old. I'm like, oh man, I'll just, <laughs> I'll get a super from somewhere else. I don't, yeah. I don't need to do this right now. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Can't I steal this from somewhere? Yeah. Um, no, unfortunately not. Eventually, it all comes down to just making it. That's where I end up. Always just making it because then you, know, you try and beg, borrow, steal it, and you're like, it still doesn't fit the way I want. Yeah. I may as well build it the way might I want well, it. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, open animation fields in Final Cut. No, thank yeah. you. I'll oh, just do it in After Effects. Fuck that. Oh, no way. <laughs> Have you ever used After Effects? I mean, I know how to use it. I, I, I don't create things though. No. I can edit things. I can like if someone's created something, I can go into. Oh yeah, I can. I can change I, it up and. I can maneuver in a template. No yeah, problem. Yeah, yeah, but I can't no, build a template to save my life. Look, look. I, if I if I put my mind to it i could probably do it but i haven't and i don't think i ever will <laughs> <laughs> no nah, not for me uh, yeah. i'll totally outsource that you know yeah, yeah. always outsource it yeah. um check yeah. out fiverr kids if you need to or hire locally in western sydney if yeah. possible um you know uh yeah definitely get someone else you need you need you need people to help you you can't do it all, all yourself um i'm a one-man band on a lot of things but even the stuff that you're a one-man band on like I'm I'm an okay cinematographer. I can shoot. Uh, I can shoot commercially, but like shooting a film, making it like you know beautiful and, and schmicko. That one yeah. percent. I don't have that one percent. Everyone has their certain skill as well, yeah. like that. There, you know, and those people that are like really do all the slick stuff probably couldn't do like the everyday like. Yeah, that's true. That's true. <laughs> Yeah, stuff, but, you know? Like. Yeah, but the cinematographers, man, they make the money. They're the ones oh, that get the yeah. dosh. Yeah. They are always getting the spondula. Yeah. Yeah, be a cinematographer. It's like if you want to be in music, be a drummer. You'll always be in a band. <laughs> always. <laughs> be a cinematographer. You'll always be shooting. <laughs> but you got to be a good one. Yeah. you got to be a good one. Yeah. Uh, I'm a cameraman, not a cinematographer. I can operate a camera. Yeah, yeah. I can yeah. shoot an interview. No problem. No yeah. problem shooting an interview. Yeah. Um... Oh, look, I, I think I've been harsh on myself. I've got, I, I'm, I'm good at car porn, actually. Ooh. Yeah, good at shooting cars. Yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah good at filming cars. No. Well, I did a lot of race car racing uh, footage because I used to shoot racing. Unreal. Racing TV. So you, you go do the interview with the race car driver and then uh, you need to film their car. So you need to figure out ways to make it look sexy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, yeah, doing... Um, Which isn't easy. No, it's not. It's yeah. not. It's not as easy. When you know how to do it, it is. But to learn how to do it's hard. Yeah. Like, uh, you got to find the angles, find the right light. Yeah. And lighting, that's the other thing I suck at. I hate lighting. Yeah, that's, a, that's, that's, a, that's what makes a cinematographer, I guess. Yeah. <laughs> well, I say as well, like, you know, the absence of sound can lead to tension. The absence of light can do that as well. Yeah. No, not just know your light. Shaping no, light. Shaping yeah. light and how to do your shadows. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I think, I think we're almost at the end. Where are we up to, uh, Nate? We're pretty close. Oh, fuck, we are close. Oh, yeah, shit, we better put a bow on this and get the hell out of here, man. <laughs> um, but look, let's wrap this up, Matthias. Thank you so much for being on the no, first you. episode of 2020 for the Pagey train. I'm on it. I'm on it. Um, keep, keep, making, me. keep making films, man. You're doing a fantastic job. Um, congratulations on your win last year. Um, and uh, look, man, uh, we'll see you guys uh, next episode. And uh, don't forget to tune into the Pagey train. And please um, subscribe and... Um, yeah, uh, uh, set for notifications, and we will see you next time. All right, we're out, we're out. <laughs> How do we go, Nate? Yeah. 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 Oh, frustrated. The banter was strong. Oh, man. <laughs>